uh, thank the governors who are with us here today. We have Governor Kim Reynolds uh, from Iowa, uh, Governor Christy Noem from South Dakota, Governor Pillen from Nebraska, and Governor Stitt from Oklahoma. They're here to both tour the border, to tour what we're doing with the buoys in the border, as well as uh, they are deploying uh, military and our law enforcement officers to help Texas secure the border. In addition to these governors with us here today, the following governors have also provided either military personnel or law enforcement personnel. Governor Lee from Tennessee, Governor Little from Idaho, Governor DeSantis from Florida, Governor DeWine from Ohio, Governor Sanders from Arkansas, Governor McMaster from South Carolina, Governor Youngkin from Virginia, Governor Justice from West Virginia, Governor Mark Gordon from Wyoming, Governor Burgum from North Dakota. All together, counting Texas, we have 15 governors in 15 states from the United States that are deploying personnel to secure the border. All together, if you add in the other states that are supporting this mission, 25 governors in 25 states, half of the states of the United States of America are banding together to step up and secure a border that President Biden has abandoned. And there are some very simple reasons why we're having to do this. The primary reason is because Joe Biden is not doing his job. Joe Biden is responsible for the largest amount of illegal immigration in the history of the United States. And there are deadly consequences because of that. More people are dying per year under Joe Biden as president than under any president in the history of the United States. The border between the United States and Mexico is turning into a deadly welcome mat for the migrants who are coming here. As an example, just last year alone, there was an all-time record number of people who died crossing the border. 853 people died last year. One was an eight-year-old child who died in federal detention. Another was a five-year-old who died drowning coming across the river. And then just last month, here in the Eagle Pass area, there was an infant who drowned crossing the border. That was before that we put the buoys up. A little infant drowned and not a peep out of Washington, D.C. about that. And then who can forget the 53 people who perished in a tractor trailer not far from here, just, just down or up the road in San Antonio. It's for reasons like this why the United Nations, an agency of it, declared the border between the United States and Mexico as the deadliest land border in the entire world. Joe Biden is responsible for that deadly border. But us governors, we're not going to stand idly by and see this disaster wrecked upon the United States. And that's why they have come here and why they are sending their personnel here. Because they know that we as states share an obligation. And that's to step up and respond to this unparalleled catastrophe caused by Joe Biden. And let me be clear, we are fully authorized by the Constitution of the United States of America to do exactly what we are doing, and that is to secure the border. Next up is going to be Governor Reynolds from Iowa. Thank you, Greg. First of all, I want to just say thank you to you and Texas and all that you've done to really protect the security of the United States. Thank you for the update this morning, for giving us the opportunity to do the aerial view, to really understand the challenges that the terrain presents, to get a chance to see the bullies and the sea wires and just all of the efforts that are being put in place to secure uh, this country. Yeah, Texas has been ground zero uh, from for over two years because the Biden created a uh, catastrophe that we see at the southern border, whether it's national security, public safety, uh, or just an assault on our democracy, uh, you have been front and center through all of that. Uh, and because they have, on day one, this administration has re reversed uh, policy.
policies that protect the uh, sovereignty of this country and the citizens and ultimately have made every state a border state, certainly not to the extent that Texas is experiencing. But let me tell you, Iowa is located at the intersection of two major interstates and uh, it is a pathway for the Mexican cartel and for uh, human traffickers to take to go from Mexico to the Midwest. Since 2020, we have seen a 500% increase in the amount of fentanyl that has been seized. We've seen a 100% increase in meth, and we have seen drug-related deaths increase by 35%. Earlier this year, in 90 days, from March to May, and I want to get these statistics because I don't want to get them wrong, the DPS actually seized 27,500 fentanyl tablets, 330 pounds of meth, and 72 pounds of cocaine. Again, I know that's nothing compared to what you're seeing here, but the bulk of those seizures can be tied directly to Mexico uh, and the cartel. And we're a thousand miles away from Eagle Pass. I wanna say before I turn it back over, just as the chair of the Republican Governors Association, I wanna thank the 16 Republican governors that stepped up to do the job that the Biden administration has failed to do. We have over 1,600 uh, National Guard soldiers that have committed to help you, 330 uh, and, and counting uh, law enforcement that have stepped up. I'm proud to say that Iowa has 109 National Guard soldiers on the ground today. I want to thank my Adjutant General from Iowa, General Osborne. I want to thank him for his service and his leadership. And again, thank the Republican governors in all the states, as you indicated, for stepping in and doing what the Biden administration should be doing. The fact that the states are protecting the southern border is an assault on the Constitution and the American people, and it is time for this president to step up way past time and do his job. Thank you, Governor. Uh, now, Governor Pillen from Nebraska. Well, thank you. <clears throat> I want to say we got to use that word thank you a lot. Governor Abbott, courageous leadership. It's the words I think of when I think of you to step up. So thank you for all that you've done. Uh, I want to also say thank you, Governor Stitt. Governor Reynolds, Governor Noem, for us being here together, showing great united and the other Republican governors. Uh, I don't think we ever say enough thank you to the men and women in uniform that are behind us. They got our backs 100% of the time, and uh, we never say it. And uh, I need to give a shout out to the uh, men and women from Nebraska. We've got 61 troops down. I got to spend time with at Alpha, and a couple got me behind my back. And, General Strong, uh, we had a great team. Couldn't be more proud. Uh, maybe one piece. Sir, can Governor, can you, can you step around closer to the mic, please? Sir? One piece that I can bring. I'm the newest governor. I have the privilege to take the oath of office February, January 5 this past year. That's very, very vivid in my mind. I took an off. I swore to the Constitution of the State of Nebraska and to the Constitution of the United States of America to defend defend against all foreign and domestic foes, anybody that's trying to harm us. And I am here because we together have to work to uphold that. I like to use a one word. What's my one word of what I've experienced my first time here? My word is disbelief. Absolutely disbelief of the misrepresentation. That's just the misrepresentation of the buoys. I'm a pig. I'm, I'm a pig farmer. It's hogwash, pun intended. Hogwash. The buoys are a deterrent. They don't cause a band-aid. And if they do, I say, what the heck? Stay on your side of the river. Uh, the misrepresentation of who's coming. I mean, we are fighting cartels that are trying to kill our kids. Kill our kids. That's one thing in the United States we all surely agree on, right? Is our kids that we're going to protect our kids. So my message is simple. We have to do the work. And Biden administration, federal government, do your dadgum job. Common sense solve this problem. Follow the leadership of Governor Abbott. Thank you. Thank you, Governor. Now, Governor Noam from South Dakota. Well, good afternoon. I've been down here to the border before. This was the first time I had the chance to really see it from the air. And, and what we're literally witnessing is a war zone. And it's astonishing to me to watch it perpetuated by our federal government and by President Biden. Um, 
I was the first state to send National Guard troops down here to participate in partnership with the Texas National Guard. Um, and many other governors had sent some law enforcement. I sent my National Guard because I recognized what we were facing, that this really is a war. It's a war for our country and for our federal laws that have been passed in our Constitution. They are threatening our sovereignty right now, and the cartels are out for blood, and they are facilitating the trafficking of our children each and every day. That's what I find so shocking about the way that Biden continuously violates federal law, is the lack of humanity in these policies. And I hope you all, you talk about this in your press today, and I hope you play this and you print it. These policies are inhumane of what they're doing to people and to families. The cartel is using these children to cross this border to get their drugs and to sell those children and taking advantage of them. The statistics are that over 60% of the children that cross this border will be um, exploited by these cartels. What's interesting is in South Dakota, yes, we've seen incredible increases in our drug uh, proliferation in our state. We've seen incredible human trafficking consequences because of these policies here. I have another element at stake as well. I have Native American tribes in South Dakota. I have no jurisdiction on their reservations. Um, Joe Biden is underfunding their tribal law at the same time. They are not coming out onto our tribal reservations and enforcing law and helping protect the communities there. And the vast majority of the drugs in the Midwest are coming right through South Dakota on these reservations that I can't do anything about. The people of South Dakota live with being on the front line of this mess every single day because the cartels are set up in South Dakota too. And that's what this country needs to realize is that when you have a president in the White House that breaks the law and ignores the law, that it has consequences, not just here in Texas, which you have by far the worst consequences I've ever seen. And I want to thank Governor Abbott for all that he's done. He's a patriot for fighting this fight and continuing to fund it and all the men and women that are standing up beside him, allowing him to do it. But the fact is it doesn't stop in Texas. I deal with it every single day in South Dakota. Our crimes have gone up, our drug um, issues have gone up consistently, and it's because we have cartels set up in South Dakota too. So I'm all in. I've had our National Guard down here for a long time. We've had our Lakota helicopters down here on a federal mission doing surveillance on the border. And in September 1st, we're gonna send more troops down here. Um, we absolutely have to show people that there's a different choice. And it literally is just enforcing the laws that we already have. You've heard our Border Patrol talk about this. You've heard our National Guard talk about this, our public safety. We don't need more laws. We just need the president to respect the laws that we already have. So thank you, Governor. Thank you, Governor. You're a rock star. Thank you. Uh, now, Governor Stiff from Oklahoma. Yeah, thank you so much. Thanks for being here. Uh, you know, Oklahoma, we sent troops down here in support of this mission. I think there's 16 other governors that have stepped up to the plate. Uh, every state is a border state. And in Oklahoma, uh, we're obviously, we're definitely a border state to Texas. We've seen fentanyl uh, increase. I think the deaths have gone up 500% in Oklahoma just over the last couple of years. We know that's coming from here. Uh, you know, I think the American people need to understand, we just need a policy change. We just need uh, to go back to the Trump era policy of remain in Mexico. So again, I like to explain to people, this has nothing to do with immigration, all right? We have a great Hispanic community in Oklahoma. About 12% of our population is Hispanic, uh, contribute greatly to our, to our, uh, to our state, entrepreneurship, um, just a huge economic impact. But you don't have a brain if you don't think we need to secure our border. The terrorists coming through, all the things my fellow governors have said about the crime that's coming through and the cartels that are using this and exploiting people, it's got to stop. The other thing that I, I think I'm, I didn't realize until I came down here that I, I, I hope you guys will report on is there's a border wall right here behind us, okay? But we can't defend the border wall. Uh, we have to go into the river and build a barrier because the policies right now, if you cross the river and you get on that side of the border wall, the federal policies right now are you get released into the U.S. You get you get turned over to the uh, to the uh, immigration. You get turned over. So uh, it makes no sense whatsoever. We've got dual missions. We're just wasting the taxpayer money because we're actually trying to secure our southern border. Everybody knows we need to have a secure border. Uh, so we're glad to join in, and, and, and this guy is the point of the spear, uh, Governor Abbott, so we're so happy to support him. And I think you'll see all the other uh, um, you know, Republican governors for sure stepping up to the plate uh, to support this important mission and protect American people. That's really what we're here to do. So uh, thank you so much for having me. Thank you, Governor Stitt. In closing, let me just say this, and that is 
Texans and our fellow Americans have deep gratitude for our service members who serve on the board. It includes the National Guard behind us who wear these fatigues every day. And in this heat, it's extraordinary. They work day and night to prevent people from entering the United States illegally. They work alongside the Texas Department of Public Safety. The Texas Department of Public Safety also has been engaged in this mission 24 seven for years now. And get this very important fact for all Americans, just the Texas Department of Public Safety alone has seized enough fentanyl to kill every human being in the United States of America. All of America could be wiped out simply by the fentanyl seized by the Texas Department of Public Safety. And we've been aided over this past year uh, by Mike Banks, who's right behind Governor Stitt. He's our Texas border zone. He served for 23 years in Border Patrol. He brings firsthand experience and intelligence about what to do, strategies to employ, how to be more effective, and he has made us uh, more effective. And importantly, his first day on the job, he spent more time on the border than the borders are for the United States of America. It is an insult to Americans that the Biden administration even claims they have a border czar, they care about the border. Even Joe Biden himself took only a passing trip to El Paso that didn't really go to the border like these governors went today. And yet, thousands of people are losing their lives because of Joe Biden's open borders. We as governors aim to do everything we can to put a stop to it. We'll take a few questions. Go ahead. Good afternoon, Governor. Um, it, a worker from the Mexican side of the United States International Boundary Water Commission said that Texas was moving the border buoys further north to comply with that survey. Is that true, sir? It is correct. There were allegations, which I don't know if they were true or not, but allegations uh, that the buoys had drifted toward the Mexico side. And so out of an abundance of caution, uh, Texas went back uh, and moved the buoys uh, into a location uh, where it is clear that they are on the United States side, not on the Mexico side. I do wanna add this, and that is if you look at the treaty between the United States and Mexico, that treaty specifically references buoys as a device that can be allowed in these waters between the United States and Mexico. And so it's highly recognized that buoys were acceptable and not a deterrent to navigable waters. Yes. Uh, so right now, uh, Trump and DeSantis are the top two Republicans in the polls at the moment. Um, as a governor of Texas, when it comes to solving the border crisis, who would you rather have as a Republican president, Trump or DeSantis? At the so listen, we, we just want a Republican president. I know that the country cannot suffer four more years under Joe Biden. America will be destroyed from within by Joe Biden's policy. Thousands more of migrants will lose their lives, but the soul of America will be crushed. But there's one team of people who's pushing back against that, and that's the governors across the United States from the northern border to the southern border. Governors are combining together to push back against the Biden administration. You, go ahead. There's never been a time in Texas history, I don't believe, where there have been 25 governors who rally together for border security. Is, has this ever happened before this that is, you know of? This is the first that I'm aware of, but it shows the unity that we have in this country among governors. People have to deal with real life issues and challenges in their states all the time. I think it was Governor Stitt who said what everyone here knows. Every state, every state in the United States is a border state. Sure, it's Oklahoma, it's all the way to South Dakota. You heard Kim Reynolds and I would talk about it. Look at what's going on in New York. Look at what's going on in Illinois. They may be Democrat governors and Democrat mayors, but they're fed up as much as Republicans are with the Biden administration and the way that Biden is destroying our states and our cities and our country. The Americans will not tolerate it anymore. A few more questions. Anyone, nothing? Anyone have a question for the other governors? 
All right. Great. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Everyone.